So England appears to be in a state of civil unrest at the moment. And what's interesting is that the media here in the United States is basically silent about it, which it usually isn't with things that are going on that are pretty major in England. But in this particular on this particular topic, they're just looking the other way. So if you don't get your news from the internet, you have no idea that anything is happening at all. I like to cover things that the mainstream media isn't covering. So let's go through this together. Because really it got started following the recent stabbing of children in Southport. So there was a Taylor Swift themed dance class for young children. Um, and the attacker came in and began stabbing kids. Kids like as young as six years old. Three of them died, eight of them were injured. The attacker was a, I don't know, I don't want to call him a teenager, but he is like 17, almost 18. Um, so at this point, I think next week he'll be an adult. But he was born to Rwandan parents. And this kind of is, is central to the issue because there's been sort of a, a boiling issue for a while now in England with regard to the fact that those who are being brought in, the, the amount of immigration that's going on in England, is coming from countries that are not... Um, I guess bastions of British culture, shall we say, and don't even like merge properly with British culture. And so the immigrant class is treated very differently and much better by the British government and even city councils and also by the police. And yet you have this just one incident after another that isn't dealt with appropriately. Remember, this is in England where people really don't have an ability to, to defend themselves. Um, which kind of makes the entire thing worse. When you've got the Dilly Rigby thing, when you've got one terrorist event after another, and yet nothing is really done. So you have this sort of like, I guess, you know, this boiling action that's been going on, honestly, for decades. And this recent stabbing incident, I think, has been something of a trigger. So after that, a lot of people came out to protest, and they were met by, uh, I guess you could say, they're referred to in the media, in the British media, as anti-racism protesters. It's not really accurate. There's it's more like being met by Antifa, being met by uh, communists who proclaim to be anti-hate, um, and and they're showing up in response to these people who are frankly just at their wit's end by these different attacks by people from other parts of the world with a different culture, and really nothing is being done on the political level to change that. The influx continues, right? And this is actually a pretty small island, and yet there's no sort of like cap, even by mainstream politicians suggesting, hey, we can only fit so many people, or even, you know, our culture is, is good in itself, ought to be defended, and we can only have so many other people from foreign cultures come in before, um, the, the, before the indigenous culture kind of collapses. Right, but before there's, I guess you could say, unrest. But what isn't being reported, um, even by British media, by and large, is the fact that it's not just these like Antifa-style groups that were coming out. Originally, they were there. But now what we have are gangs or groups of organized Muslim men who are armed, are carrying swords, and are attacking candidly anyone who's white. And so you have this, um, what started out as more of a cultural issue is becoming something of an ethnic issue. Um, but these Muslim groups are, are literally just attacking like white English boys um, with swords. And remember, this kind of armament is not legal in England. You cannot carry a sword, you cannot carry a knife, you cannot carry a gun, you cannot carry pepper spray. Right? The entire British populace is entirely disarmed at the legal level. Of course, that doesn't translate to people who aren't willing to follow the law. And that's what you have here. Now, they didn't just get these swords overnight though, right? So that, uh, that kind of leads to this other question of how long have they had these swords? And the types of swords that they are using are those that are associated more with like Islam, right? Uh, the, the, the curved swords, it's not like the swords that you think of when you think of a sword, most likely, when you think of the straight sword with the um, cross handle. No, that's not what they're using. And it's kind of interesting, I think it's almost emblematic of the sort of cultural 
uh, strife that's going on. And I think that they would see it that way as well. But again, it's not legal, but it's, it's also not being reported. Instead, the only thing that's being reported by British press, which are those who are covering this issue, which took it took them, it took them a while to actually start covering this issue, by the way, but eventually they just couldn't ignore it. Well, the only thing that's being reported them is by them is like the far right violence. They're not actually reporting about these massive waves of Muslim men calling themselves the Muslim Defense League. <laughs> who are wandering around and attacking people and getting into these, I mean, sword fights on the streets of England in 2024, which is just, I mean, it's a bizarre sentence to say out loud, but that's what's happening. Again, that's the Muslim Defense League, or the MDL. Um, and if you want to look up videos of this, you can find it throughout places like Twitter. You can't find it so much being reported by any mainstream source at all. And the there is a very much a two-tiered policing uh, thing going on, in which the police also are absolutely focused upon um, English protesters and not on these Muslim groups. You see that over and over again, the police arresting, frankly, mostly the elderly white people who aren't doing anything. That seems to be the focus. And it's like the most cowardly focus that you could think of. It's like, these are the people who can't do anything to me, therefore I'm going to arrest them. And not the people who, you know, are sharpening their swords at the local mosque. Speaking of which, we have at least one video um, that's going around showing literally a police officer speaking into a microphone telling uh, a group of these Muslim men to leave their weapons at the mosque. If there's any weapons or anything like that, what I would do is discard them in the mosque. Leave them here. You don't give anybody any reason or have any interaction with the police. Like the interaction. Now imagine, imagine if the call was to hide the weapons in a church. Would that be okay? Like, would the police just look the other way if they found out that, like, a bunch of these um, white men were storing their weapons at the church? Would they just look the other way and say, what's the church? We're not going to go in there. Somehow, like, I doubt it. I don't think that is an accurate representation of what would happen. And yet, this is, like, emblematic of the entire situation that's been boiling over for decades now, because that's what happened when you had the grooming gangs, which were part of the what I called earlier, the, the boiling process, right? You had the grooming gangs in which groups of Muslim men were targeting uh, British girls, raping them or gang raping them, and then police were t turning the other way and refusing to prosecute because they didn't want to upset community relations nor be seen as racist. And so when that finally, you know, was released to the public, when it, when it was finally... Um, acknowledged as a problem, acknowledged what had been happening, well, yeah, you're going to have some serious anger amongst the British public, uh, and that's that's at least part of the the anger that, that's there within them. And I think there are a lot of people here who have reached a boiling point, but the British police, again, are responding in tandem with the government, but there's only one priority, and that's defending the... Uh, Muslim class, if you want to call that a class, against the, the protesting English individuals. In fact, there's now a rapid response security scheme for mosques at risk of violent disorder. So the mosques get priority, or priority protection, I suppose, if a protesting group shows up, shows up outside. And then you have to ask, well, would, would a regular business get the same uh, response no, because quite little. This is the this is the rapid response security scheme. They they absolutely have preferential treatment as a as as a specific choice by by the police and government. So you have this civil unrest that started in one location but has spread throughout English cities, and even apparently a little bit um, into Northern Ireland, but. Police are so overwhelmed by the scope of what they're calling widespread disorder that they just can't show up at all of the protests that they want to show up at. That's how overwhelmed they are. And to speak about the level of English anger, well, the Brits attacked a hotel used to house asylum seekers. That kind of shows you exactly what, there's a sort of like pinpoint targeting that's being used by these protesting groups that's, that's descending 
into riot behavior at various different locations, but they're choosing these these targets very carefully. This t this took place in Rotherham, which of course is the sort of I guess the central city, the first place the story broke that there had been thousands of these these cases where police had looked the other way to the grooming gangs. This hotel got set on fire during um, this protest turned riot. Also being targeted are immigration centers. Um, th these the the sort of targets that are being seen. So like there's a there's an, a rage within the British people that I think is coming out now, and it was inevitable. Of course it was. Like there's only so much that a certain people will just endure before there's going to be some kind of um, I don't know if you want to call it an uprising, but there's going to be a certain response. And what you have over there in the UK are speech laws that prevent people from actually venting about what's going on. You see like one video after another of people being arrested in their homes for being offensive on the internet at the same time as you have this class of people, this, this, this imported group of people who are causing a disproportionate amount of crime and have been and also while the police have been looking the other way so as not to uh, seem offensive or to seem racist or something like that because their priorities are absolutely disordered because their priorities are not with the British people. Now, um, now that I'm sort of getting toward the end of this video, I will attempt to keep you guys updated as to like how this progresses, but I'm aware that there are a lot of people in England as a result of those speech laws who may be nervous about reporting what's going on, so feel free to send me your insights or footage. I'm in the United States, I don't worry about British speech laws, I'm, um, I can you know, speak pretty freely here in the United States. So feel free to send me those um, tips and information. The form at my website does come directly to me. It doesn't go to some third party handler. So I will keep people abreast. I think it's a, it's an interesting story that, that's, that's out there because it's like, how could it possibly not happen at some point? It's just kind of like ultimately the question. Now we have to kind of see if this one gets quelled because even if it does, you will see that happen later on because the policies that are being enacted by the government aren't sustainable. A multicultural society, which is not the same as multi-ethnic, but a multicultural society is absolutely not sustainable. Hey, you're still here! Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already and share it with your friends. I've also got links in the description as to how you can help support my work. Thank you so much.